Hi guys, welcome to another short magic tutorial. Uh, although it's not really classed as a, a piece of magic, but it's a bit of fun. So here's something that you guys might want to do uh, just to break up the monotony of doing trick after trick. And it's for those of you who are gamblers who like to have a little dabble on the horses. We could almost be in Vegas right now. And what you use is a pack of cards and they are just a regular deck and you invite the spectators to come and join in and you can have uh, two or three or even just one spectator help you with this and what we need is to lay out a racetrack and so for that we're just going to use uh, one, two, three, four cards we're going to make it four furlongs long so I'm going to lay these along the edge of my mat as so we're then going to have a winning post. The box can be that. So there it is there, the winning post over here. I guess I could stand it up like that. Or even lay it down. So there's our racetrack. We of course need some horses, does help. Uh, so for this I'm going to use just the aces to act as our four horses. There they are there. So we we'll remove the four horses. These will begin at the start line, down here. Now the idea is of this particular performance is that the spectators are going to choose their three horses and uh, that will leave me with one of them and that's the one that I'll play with. Now what we do is I do need to just separate the cards about halfway, I think that's about halfway. I give half the cards to the spectator and I have half myself. And what we do is we shuffle these. Now let's say for example that the spectators choose three horses and they leave me with say uh, the diamond which is just here if the camera can see that. So we have diamonds, spades, hearts and clubs. So I'm going to be the diamonds what I'm left with. Now what we do is we shuffle the cards like this and the spectator also shuffles their half of cards. Now this is the important thing here is because when they give the cards back you make a point of saying we'll use your shuffled cards first. The race then begins, are you ready? Understarted orders and they're off. And the heart moves up onto the first furlong, is an early starter. The diamond, my horse, is now up and running also. The heart moves one ahead of the rest of the pack. Diamond is still in the race, we're neck and neck on the second furlong. But I have actually moved into the lead, into the third furlong, and Spades has now joined the race along with hearts level pegging with myself the diamond. The clubs is a late starter, eventually gets started on the race and now the spades is now catching up with the two leaders. The hearts takes the early lead now onto the final furlong. The spades is neck and neck with my horse, diamonds. Clubs is making a late chase in the race. Spades is now on the second is on the last furlong and the diamonds we have three horses neck and neck on the final furlong and clubs is catching us up and clubs is now neck and neck all four horses and the diamonds wins and I win the money. Now just a bit of fun build up the tension as I said the more people get involved now what we can do here is We'll get the spectators to bring all the horses back to the starting point and what we'll do in case they think there's some sort of collusion in this what I'm going to do is to actually say rather than you leave me with a horse let's get you to choose my horse for me so what I do is I offer any spectator to pick a horse for me so they pick a card out now let's just pick out a card and they have picked the spade so the spade is my horse okay so the spade is my horse so with the horses now lined up I'm now racing the spades the ace of spades is my horse so they're under starters orders for the second race of the day and they're off and the first one out of the start line is the diamond followed by clubs neck and neck 
the diamond moves ahead onto the second furlong. The di diamond moves up to the third furlong. He is going like greased lightning. And then we have in uh, another late start is the heart. And now the diamond is on the final furlong. Can you believe that? The spade, my horse, is the final one out the box. And Spade moves up onto the second furlong. Hearts now joins me on the second furlong. The clubs is neck and neck with the other two horses. Spade, my horse, moves into the third furlong. Clubs is now neck and neck with me. As we then see, Spades is now neck and neck with the Diamonds. And Hearts is now catching up. It's a late runner, but it's catching up. And just at the pick of the post is Spades. And I win again. So how does the race always end up in your favour? Well, of course, there is a little bit of trickery involved. This is a, such a fun game to play when there's a crowd of you. And it also breaks up that monotony of the magic. There's a simple stack of cards that you need to set up before you start introducing this. Now, because I've got four furlongs, I've got four clubs, four hearts, four diamonds, four spades, all set up on there. If I had five furlongs, because sometimes I put five cards down to make it a bit more interesting, have a longer race, then you would have five cards of each, so you'd have a stack of 20. At the moment I've got 16. Once you've got those suits together, you can shuffle them up, mix them up thoroughly. This is the stack that's going to go on top of the pack. What I also do is, so that I can easily separate these and give the spectator the top half of the pack, I put a little crimp in the cards so that when I get them out of the box there is a little uh, separator there. Now I have exaggerated that a little bit for the camera to hopefully pick up, but I can just easily take off that clump of 16 cards. The aces can be spread throughout in the box and then add these to the bottom of the pack. Put these in the box and you're ready and good to go. Because it's just a regular deck, once you've done this little game, you can go on and perform other tricks as well. So. You've laid out the horses, the aces, you put your four furlongs down. Now you could use matchsticks, coins, bottle tops or anything like that to lay out the, the, the track. You've removed the aces. You then say to people, put your coin on which horse you want. Now if you've only got one spectator and get them to pick three horses and leave you with one. What you do is you separate the cards at the break point and casually give them half the cards and then you shuffle up the other half. You get them to shuffle the cards as well. This is the real convincer that the game is all fair. Now let's say that I've been left with the club as my horse. When I'm shuffling what I'm doing is I'm looking for a club at the bottom or somewhere in this pack as I'm shuffling. When I see one I get it to the top. Okay, So at the moment I've worked a club to the top. So whichever horse is left for you, whichever suit, get that card to the top, any one of them. This is the real clincher to prove that apparently there's no cheating involved. When you grab the shuffle cards from the spectator, you'll say, we'll use your cards to start with. And that really convinces them. Why have I left the extra club card, my horse, at the bottom? And you'll see why. Because, because they've shuffled the cards, when you turn over the cards, these horses are going to move up the track very rapidly in a haphazard order so there's no consistency it's all over the place so as you're dealing add a bit of commentary get the audience to scream and shout for their horse or maybe in teams and these will all come up up here while you're dealing the cards and it doesn't even matter if a card gets to the final furlong because the way this is going to end up is that once you've dealt all the cards to this point, 
all four horses will be on the final furlong. And that really adds to the excitement. Imagine the crowd screaming for their horse on the final turn of a card. It's going to be my horse because of that extra card on top. So for the second stage, you're going to get the spectator to choose your horse by taking a card. Now, I need to get rid of this card here because that's the extra club that we use to make me win. All I do is casually just flip the cards over and I just put this in the bottom part there. And I say, look, shuffle up your cards and I'll shuffle my cards again. And so we shuffle the cards so they can shuffle them, I'll shuffle mine, okay? And once again, we put their cards on top. So we're using their cards. What I do, I need them to pick a horse, but not from the top 16 cards. So what I do, I spread the card, I say, look, just take any card. Now, whichever card they take, in this case, it's the club again. Let me choose a different one diamond when you go to return this return it anywhere in the stack of 16 now this time your horse will win before all the 16 cards are dealt out possibly but we'll see so it makes it a different outcome so this time all four horses won't be on the final furlong move these back deal the cards out again and you'll have the winner once again. It's called The Gambler's Dream and was performed by Paul Daniels many years ago on the Paul Daniels Magic Show. he done uh, a similar version to this. But hopefully that's something that you can add to your repertoire of magic.